This is the Sonia Poulton Show on today's News Talk TNT. I wanted to take you back slightly. Anyone remember the strange death of MI6 agent Gareth Williams? He was found in a bathtub in a hodl with zips padlocked together. Well, uh, so this was uh, 2010. Well, Scotland Yard have now concluded 14 years on that Mr. Smith, Mr. Williams, rather, was likely have to, to have died alone. Let me just get that straight. A man whose body was zipped and padlocked into a hodl was likely to have been alone when he died. Really? For those who don't know, Gareth Williams was a Secret Services code breaker. He went missing for a week and was found in his London flat in August 2010. That already was problematic because at Secret Services, it is a well-known fact that they actually say if somebody is missing from their desk for an hour, they check up on them. Why did it first of all take a week to check up on Gareth Williams? Well, this is an enduring mystery. So he was found dead, naked and decomposing in his flat. And even though it was the height of summer, someone had switched the heating up full blast so that his body was decomposing even faster. Now, over the years, I've heard many suggestions of what happened to Gareth after his death. Someone or something sought to tar his image in the mainstream media. They put out stories about his strange fetishes, which actually the coroner concluded wasn't there wasn't a great deal of truth to that. And certainly it would appear that it was a distraction to take away from the fact that his death was far from usual. Some people have told me that he had fallen on information that he shouldn't have while he was on secondment to the secret intelligence services from GCHQ. GCHQ is in Cheltenham. It's the government's listing post. But uh, Gareth was on secondment to the Vauxhall Secret Services. And Dr. Fiona Wilcox, who was the coroner, found the event far more suspicious than the police apparently have all these years on. She was critical about the police handling of the death, including allegations of mishandling evidence from the beginning. She actually rejected suicide or autoerotic activity. She was also highly critical of the police's counter-terrorist command who failed to tell investigating officers about the existence of memory sticks in Mr. Williams' flat, um, failed to take formal statements when interviewing security intelligence staff. And she actually suspected a cleanup job had taken place at Mr. Williams' bathroom where he was, where I say he was found. There were no fingerprints or prints anywhere, which in itself was highly significant. Colin Sutton is a former Metropolitan Police detective. I've interviewed him for my Madeleine McCann documentaries. And he was actually one of the first on the scene. And he's he took the call about Gareth. And Colin said that there was a possibility of tension between the police and the secret services. And uh, and that has continued, really. I also last night I spoke with Andrea Davison. She's a former Secret Services intelligence officer. She's in South America these days and uh, for, for a number of reasons, including staying alive. She appears in my film, Paedophiles in Parliament, and she actually gave me a statement regarding Gareth, who she knew. She said Gareth was a target of an international intelligence organisation with links into 6-5 and the agency. Their hallmark is bizarre assassinations, which act as a warning to insiders and assets to keep quiet and toe the line. Similar bizarre assassinations of intelligence insiders come to mind. Jonathan Moyle found hanging naked inside a wardrobe with a pillowcase over his head. Stephen Milligan, MP, found naked with a bag over his head and laid his stockings on. Stephen also had an orange thrust into his mouth and a flex tied around his throat. James Rusbridger was found dressed in nothing but oil skins and a gas, ma- and a gas mask with a rope connecting his neck <clears throat> and ankles to pulleys. All these intelligence assassinations have strange sexual overtones tied to them, making their deaths even more harrowing, says Andrea to me. No one is ever ha- apprehended for these crimes and no one ever will be because the assassins and assassinations are state sanctioned. And that is what Andrea believes. And Andrea worked at uh, Vauxhall Secret Services and as I say, appeared in my film, Paedophiles in Parliament. So I think, yes, it's a very old tactic, they're saying in the comments, absolutely. So I think rest in peace, Gareth, Gareth Williams, clearly not getting any justice anytime soon. And this, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the point when we bring in Gemma Cooper and I will be back shortly with her. Talk that matters. For once, we just need to do what's best for this damn country and not what's best for the world. Today's News Talk Radio, TNT. 
Lovely to see you this morning, Gemma. How are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. I mean, I saw that headline over the weekend and I did rather think, why on earth have they bothered to 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 drag this story out again? Because all it does is focus everybody's attention on the entire weirdness of that case. And everybody remembers that story here in the UK, and I'm sure it did the rounds globally, even of a man in a holdall that was padlocked from the outside who dismembered himself effectively. You know, it was some sort of autoerotic or some kind of fetish. I mean, fair play to the coroner for speaking out. I mean, the coroner does have a lot of power and coroners have a lot of sway in the UK and they they don't pull their punches when they say something it goes on public record but it's a bit like you know do you remember the weapons of mass destruction dossier that, that you know the BBC got into all that trouble about Dr David Kelly apparently slashed his own wrists in the woods you know and everyone went what oh. you know everybody knew that was a, a, was a was a fake as well that was a state operation to shut him up um he had no intention of committing suicide he was going for a walk I think he was walking the dog and he never came back because uh, he knew too much and this is this is you know it's fascinating to hear uh, your source there who now lives in South America talking about these operatives of, you know, deep state and state sanctioned killings and the way they're dressed up to look like some weird sexual fetish gone wrong. Well, it's rather too many, aren't there? And there's, there's rather too many patterns and they think we don't see through it. But we do. We do. We absolutely do. You know, I, I do wonder why they've dredged it up again. That's what, that's what I thought that. I thought, why have you brought this back into the public domain to say nothing to see here when we're all going, well, there clearly is. There clearly is something to see here and everyone's now talking about it again. Absolutely. I also thought the same thing as well. Suspicious minds, eh? This is journalism for you. But I think also the the way that these people are killed, there is like a final humiliation to them, isn't it? It's like, okay, we're now just going to humiliate you so you can't defend yourself. And uh, it's, it's a tactic. It's clearly a tactic. There are obviously questions here. Somebody like Colin Sutton, brilliant cop, um, a good cop. <laughs> and it's weird to have to say that, isn't it? But Colin's absolutely brilliant. I've interviewed him a number of times. And, uh, and again, he was in no no doubt that there was this tension that existed between the secret services and the police. The police simply weren't given all the information that they needed in order to be able to conduct a thorough investigation. And that was blocked by the secret services. Yeah, I mean, in a case like this, the police would be the last to know, wouldn't they? <laughs> you know, yeah. it's on a very much a, a need to know basis when it's a, when it's something like this. But you kind of think it's something out of a James Bond film. But then when you look at Ian Fleming and the James Bond novels, you know, and, and the research that's been done on those, Mark Devlin, actually here in the UK, the author, he's done quite a lot of research on the, uh, the James Bond novels and how much of that actually was insider information, a bit like 1984 and all those kind of things and Brave New World, those books. There's a lot of truth. In, in the James Bond stuff. It's not just all dressed up as glamour and put on the big screen or put in a novel. It, the, you know, that Secret Service operations are, are, are strange. <laughs> They're strange establishment weirdness, probably dreamed up in public schools across the UK. You know, I don't know. But, it, you know, that's not even the story I was going to talk about today. But there's so much to it. There is so much there to the way. There is so much to it. I, I hope one day you and I can really unpack um, the sort of relationship between the secret services and government because it's so interesting. This is the Sonia Poulton Show on today's News Talk TNT.